bro, what is the Interpol going to do? Oh my God, you guys stole artifacts back to China? Like, that's, that was my point. My point from the top is like, of course, no shit China did it. And also, it is objectively a moral good that China did. All right, let's watch this. The Mysterious Chinese Art Heist Across Europe. Watch thousands of documentaries for free for 30 days at the link in the description. Stockholm, Sweden, 2010. Passes by on the streets of the capital were confused and scared. Several cars in and around the vicinity had lit up in flames, and no one had any idea why. Police soon arrived on scene, but they too were baffled with what they saw. Now, several kilometers to the west, on the outskirts of the city, a small group of masked men made their way across the grounds of the Drottningholm Palace, the private residence of the Swedish royal family. Their target was the Royal Pavilion, situated in the southern part of the complex, which displayed countless works of historic art. Once there, the men forced their way in through the back doors and went right to work. They smashed the protective display cases and grabbed whatever items they wanted. This immediately set off the alarm system, which alerted the Swedish police. Now, despite the alarm, the robbers remained calm because they knew exactly where the police were. The burning cars on the other side of the city were in fact a distraction for them, set up by the robbers, and they had fallen right into the trap. Still, the police raced towards the crime scene, but by the time they reached the Royal Pavilion, the place was empty. The robbers were in and out in less than six minutes. Upon inspection, sculptures, chalices, plates, and teapots, all invaluable items, were now missing from the permanent state collection of art and antiquities. And this wasn't just a huge economic loss, but a cultural one as well. It was later found out that after fleeing the pavilion on mopeds, the robbers made their way to a nearby lake, where they were then picked up by a white speedboat. That's crazy. Every part of this is such a movie, bro. Holy so shit. So from this point, the trail went cold. Despite this, authorities remained relatively optimistic, as in situations like these, items tended to be recovered sooner or later. Very few people are actually prepared to handle such high-profile works, as the pieces are often too difficult to sell. But what the authorities failed to realize at the time was that the culprits were no ordinary criminals. Little did they know, the Drottningholm heist was just the beginning. Five months later, in Bergen, Norway, masked men descended from a glass ceiling into the Koda Museum, grabbing vases, imperial seals, and more. In 2012, in Durham, England, thieves broke into a museum at Durham University, stealing high-value porcelain sculptures and bowls. That same month, the museum at Cambridge University was also hit. And in 2015, in Paris, France, intruders smashed their way into the Chateau de Fontainebleau, the exquisite former residence of the French monarchs, with more than 1,500 rooms full of treasures, making out with artifacts so rare they were considered the masterworks of the royal chateau. Now at this point, with all this set in Europe, you may be wondering why this video is titled the way it is. Well, it turns out the heists shared a similar MO. Cars were lit on fire as distractions for police. Actions I like that they have a signature move. And meticulous. Getaway methods were often identical, but most importantly, the artifacts stolen were all by of the, a similar type. By the way, this is straight up like a, like a no pixel heist. This is set up exactly like a no pixel heist. You see, the first heist, the pavilion in Sweden, on the grounds of the Jottingholm Palace, was the Chinese pavilion. The 56 objects stolen from the Koda Museum Clean in Norway size? was yep. from the China collection. Intruders broke into the Oriental Museum in Durham University, England, and it was the Grand Chinese Museum that was targeted in the Chateau de Fontainebleau in France. In each heist, the robbers set their sights on art and antiquities from China. In fact, it seemed they were working from a very specific shopping list. They knew exactly what they wanted and where each piece was located. And they were willing to leave behind high value objects that weren't on the list. Like in the Chateau, they completely ignored the other 1,500 rooms containing many other priceless relics, as they weren't Chinese. Interpol was put on the case, as the crime- What are you gonna do? You, how, how? Okay, Interpol, go ahead. Go ahead, Interpol. Yeah, recover these heists, man. Recover these fucking artifacts, man. Go ahead. What do you mean? It's theirs, most likely. ...were clearly transnational. But despite their investigation, the crime spree could not be stopped. In the years that followed, reports of Chinese art heists continued throughout museums across Europe. 
Now, the general feeling in intelligence circles was that the criminals were carrying out instructions from abroad as ordered jobs, with a true mastermind far from the jurisdiction of European countries. This needs to be but a who movie. who was this mastermind, or masterminds? And why would they steal so many documented works that can neither be legally sold nor openly exhibited? Indeed, the majority of the stolen art never actually resurfaced, increasing the likelihood that it ended up as part of someone or some organization's private collection. Top G! Top G! Years went by, it seemed to be becoming one of the greater mysteries in art, alongside Stonehenge, Banksy, and the case of the second Mona Lisa. But upon closer inspection, the mystery of the Chinese art heists began to unravel, as signs pointed to the involvement of an elite group of individuals. But to fully understand this, we first need to go back in time, back 160 years ago to the end of the Second Opium War. Beijing, 1860. British and French troops marched. Oh, the Swedish job was one component of this. No, no, we watched the Swedish job. Remember? It was only one component of this. I don't think this is the one. This is a failure, too. I don't think this is the one. Anyway. ...marched defiantly towards the magnificent Old Summer Palace, the main imperial residence of the Qing Dynasty. The men were ready for retribution, as a few weeks earlier, their comrades were tortured and murdered at the hands of the Chinese, while attempting to negotiate peace under a prearranged flag of truce. When the Europeans reached the palace grounds, they didn't hold back, laying waste to everything in sight. The old summer palace, known for its architecture, extensive gardens, and its numerous art and historical treasures, was now being desecrated and pillaged. Sculptures, robes, jewelry, vases, chalices, plates, teapots, and even Pekingese dogs, a breed unknown to Europe at the time, were hauled away as trophies. Okay, this that's too far. That's so fucked up. And, and absolutely... They stole the fucking dogs, dude. Are you serious? What the fuck is that, bro? You are fucked up, my friend. Momentous event said 160 years earlier was in fact the original Chinese art heist. Perhaps the real greatest art heist in Chinese history. Once the soldiers were done pilfering, they torched the palace grounds to the horror of the Chinese. Now, the majority of the loot made its way to Europe, ending up in the possession of private collectors and royal families. Queen Victoria of Britain was even gifted the very first pet Pekingese dog ever seen in Europe, which she brazenly named Looty. Over time, many of these Chinese relics, Looty not included, made its way to museums across Europe. Looty? Including the Jotningholm Palace in Stockholm, the Koda Museum in Berlin. Looty? Bro, that's tasteless. That is just straight up fucked up, man. That's actually fucked up. ...and the Chateau de Fontainebleau in Paris. Present day, China is one of the countries that has suffered the most from the loss of antiquities, and in the past decades has managed to conjure a groundswell of national support for the return of the cultural art. In fact, the Chinese government has openly promoted efforts to repatriate works pillaged during the Opium Wars, most notable the invaluable items stolen from the old Summer Palace. As Don't a result, me. certain individuals in China have now taken it upon themselves to lead the charge, bringing back China's lost art piece by piece, no matter the cost. But who could this be? Who would have the resources and dedication to pull off such a feat? Don't well, in 2016, China made headlines for creating more billionaires than the United States for the first time in history. The growth driven by self-made entrepreneurs, many in the tech industry. It has now reached a point where a new billionaire is minted in China every two days. For this new class of elites, buying up Chinese artifacts for inordinate sums of money has now become the latest hot trend. An opportunity to show off not just their newfound rich- Interpol is comped, head of Chinese ex-police higher up. No shit, these heists are happening. Clearly funded by Chinese government from the inside. Bro, even if they weren't, what is the Interpol going to do? Oh my God, you guys stole artifacts back to China? Like, that's that was my point. My point from the top is like, of course, no shit China did it. And also, it's a fucking good thing. Objectively, it is objectively a moral good that China did. It is, I, I'm, I'm saying that unconditionally. I think it was a good thing that they did. You can say, it's the law. It's the law. It's the law, mate. What about legality? Nah, fuck that. It's, they're literally recovering stolen artifacts. Riches, but also their fervent patriotism. 
After all, the fate of the nation's plundered art from the royal residence of what was China's last dynasty has been a focal point of national pride. In 2010, in a suburban London auction house, a 16-inch Chinese vase from the old Summer Palace started with an inconsequential price of $800,000, but ended half an hour later with a final bid of $69.5 million, 50 times its estimate. The bidder, an anonymous buyer from China. And this wasn't unique. There was also the small porcelain chicken that's bullshit, bro. The fuck buying it, dude. Don't even buy it. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. Steal it. Cup, which sold for $36 million, and a Tibetan silk tapestry, which sold for $45 million. But just swooping in and purchasing artifacts left and right isn't always possible. In many cases, the most prized and rarest works of art never go up for auction. Rather, they're kept at Western museums or held in private collections. It's okay. They steal IP and tech. Brother, that is the cost of doing business with China. You're literally comparing imperial colonial loot to literally uh, using their hyper-exploited labor force for manufacturing, knowing full well that they're going to take the IP. Yeah, that was a trade. What you're describing is trade for cheap manufacturing. But because you are so brainwashed by Western capitalist uh, nation leaders, that they have lied to you as they line up their pockets with the same additional profits that these companies have now made by firing your dad and your granddad and putting manufacturing overseas instead, knowing full well that they are going to take the IP. What do you think? Like uh, these business owners, these American business owners are so stupid. They still haven't figured out that like China is taking their IP. That's so crazy. It's been like fucking 40 years. They're like, oh, what? What's going on? Why didn't they move manufacturing immediately back domestically when they were like, oh, dude, they're stealing the IP there. Let's not do that, dummy. That is propaganda. That is made so that you resent other working class individuals in China rather than the real reason why your grandfather no longer has a job and the real reason why there's no productive forces in the United States of America anymore. It's nobody's fault except for capital owners who were profit-seeking and wanted to exploit the Chinese labor force, okay? Instead of the American labor force. What an insane lie. It's such a it's such a funny lie too because it's like objectively it's the easiest one to just immediately retort. Which the U.S. does IP theft as well. What the fuck is this Anglo talking about? Also, IP should be free anyway, regardless. I don't give a fuck about IP. However, even if you do give a fuck about IP, okay, let's say you care about IP. What are you fucking Hewlett Packard? No, shut the fuck up. Why do you care about IP? Are you are you Mister Micro or are you Mister Soft? Okay, I don't understand. Like, which one is it? You're none of those things. You are not him, okay? It's another lie that's been told by Mr. Micro and Mr. Soft so you fucking feel like you have a stake in the ownership, okay? Fuck that. You didn't build it. You don't see anything from it. They've just lied to you and told you that it, it needs to be maintained. Okay? Yeah, you are Maya Higa. You are not Mr. Micro and you are not Mr. Soft. You are not Mr. Hewlett and you're not Mr. Packard. But even if you were, these people made the decision knowing full well that China was going to steal their IP. That was a trade that they were willing to make and a trade that they're still doing to this day. So anytime someone talks about IP theft in China, remember, bullshit. Fucking bullshit. Everyone's making out like a bandit. So what happens when all legal avenues have been exhausted? Well, there is the idea that some Chinese billionaires are funding free agents to retrieve these museum works. And instead of putting these dubiously acquired treasures up for display for all to see, are understandably hiding them away in Europe shouldn't have stolen Chinese antiquities, but is it really just for a Chinese billionaire to hoard them in a private collection? Brother, there is no such thing as a Chinese billionaire without state supervision, okay? If a Chinese billionaire personally commissioned art heists like this, it's being done at the behest of the Chinese government. What are you talking about? What is a Chinese billionaire? A Chinese billionaire? You know what a Chinese billionaire is? A temporarily, uh, a temporarily billionaire man until the CCP decides you no longer deserve it. 
fuck do you mean Chinese billionaires? Oh, you're, you're thinking of Bill Gates, brother. That's what you're thinking of. No such thing. That doesn't work. It doesn't work that way out there. Okay. Highly secured, climate-controlled warehouses, though not all may actually care to play it so low-key. Because with Chinese laws, from theft to intellectual property, being very different from the Western world, the aforementioned issues of selling or exhibiting these high-profile stolen works may not be so problematic after all. There's also the justification many have that since the items were initially stolen from China, it can't be considered a real crime. And by now returning the artifacts to its homeland to be displayed, they are somehow aiding its liberation. Now all this may seem a plausible enough explanation, perhaps even likely, but billionaires aren't the only suspects here. In recent years, there has been another popular- Khan is so clueless about the world outside the US law. I love when some dumb motherfucker says this shit, bro. Like- Dude, I didn't grow up here, man. I spent more years outside of the United States than inside of the United States. I don't know if you know this or not. You probably don't because you're a fucking idiot. You are a dumb person, okay? You want to know why you're a dumb person? Because you heard other people say that and you're repeating it in here. You didn't actually seek out this information. You didn't actually try to confirm whether this is true or not. You could have very easily figured it out that that was so objectively untrue by just simply... One keystroke, a couple keystrokes with a Google search, you would have been able to figure that shit out on your own. But because you're a fucking petulant little sheep, okay, vermin, the, the dog shit that I accidentally step on, you just, instead of confirming your suspicions, doing any meaningful research whatsoever, decided to just come in here and just repeat exactly what you've heard from some other petulant, limp dick, pasty ass, Dumb fucking YouTube essayists, okay? Waste. What a waste of fucking air, dude. Be your own person, okay? Be your own fucking human being. Use your brain. Circular idea, circulating. One that puts the culpability on an entity far greater and more powerful than Chinese billionaires and that's the Chinese government. Yep. The implication being that China itself is the one ordering the thefts from Western- That chatter is harsh struck bronze in every game I can see as well. Go, di go, you go game, you dumb fuck. Dude, I love Michael. Holy shit. Michael's like, go <laughs> Michael's like, go, go game, you dumb fuck, living in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. No, I'm just kidding, by the way. That's not real. That's not real. I was just making up a, t a place. Do not misunderstand me. <laughs> it's a joke, but <laughs> it's like also it's not a real docs. It's also like he'll be like your mom is cheating on your dad. By the way, <laughs> I found out. <laughs> yeah, you're worried about China stealing IP. How about stealing IP addresses? Museums and that they are in fact the buyer of the stolen relics. After all, China's Communist Party has already made it clear that they want their art back with seemingly little care about the methodology of their return. Certainly, they've demonstrated no real concern or sympathy for the museum heists in Europe. And in fact, apparently, one of the items stolen from the Koda Museum in Bergen, Norway, is now openly displayed at one of China's international airports in Shanghai. Police in Bergen did attempt to follow up on this lead, but Norwegian authorities higher up didn't want to insult the Chinese with accusations, nor cause an international incident, and so did nothing. Though if the Chinese government is involved in all this, it would likely be through the most powerful and most impenetrable conglomerate, the China Polygroup. The state-run corporation started as an offshoot of the People's Liberation Army as their arms manufacturing wing, and has since evolved far beyond. Their varied pursuits now include not just the peddling of missiles and weapon systems, but international trade, real estate, and perhaps most unexpectedly, the buying and selling of art and antiquities. In fact, they run the third largest art auction house in the world, behind Sotheby's and Christie's. Of the company's headquarters at the new Beijing Poly Plaza, the New York Times noted the most unusual contrast of being able to buy a painting on the third floor and a missile system on the 27th. Today That's insane, dude. It's a one-stop shop, dude. Hey, sometimes you want to buy fucking uh, small arms, sometimes you want to buy missile systems, and other times you want to buy uh, recovered art. Today, they have declared assets of $140 billion, over twice the GDP of Luxembourg. So could the China Poly Group be behind the Chinese art heists in Europe? Well, maybe, 
We already know they've been running a global information network to locate and reclaim lost antiquities that, as they put it, have been illegally robbed away by Western powers. I mean, it's not as they put it. It is the truth. Like China, hate China, doesn't fucking matter. It is the truth. You know what I mean? Like, that's just an objective fact of what happened. So might call this a noble and just cause, although the countries and cultures whom China itself has taken artifacts from through conquest might have something to say about that. Also, now, China, also correct. Poly has not revealed much about their retrieval program and has not responded to public requests to elaborate on their methodology. But also they have true. outright denied any involvement in the museum heists, calling the allegations nonsense. From the evidence, they claim it cannot be inferred that there was even somebody ordering the heists. Further, Defenders of China Poly have pointed out that during the robbery in Paris, not all the stolen artworks were actually Chinese. One item in particular was of Thai origin, a replica crown of the King of Siam's, given to Napoleon III in 1861. So why would the Chinese government steal that? It's clear there are still mysteries left unanswered about the Chinese art heists, and perhaps we'll never really know, such as the mystery of the second Mona Lisa, whose very existence has puzzled- Okay, this, do this dude is fucking brought up the second Mona Lisa so casually twice now. I have no idea what the fuck that is. And now I'm like, well, wait, do you have a video on that shit? Because, like, I want to know what the fuck is the second Mona Lisa. This is literally the second time he just dropped it in there. What is that? You can't just like casually br and randomly bring that up and bring up any nothing else. Art experts for over a century. Why are there two versions of the Mona Lisa? Why? Is the one sitting Is that a real thing? Louvre in Paris, even the original. Now, if you want to find out all about this, there's an excellent documentary break. Fuck you! God damn it, dude. Shut the fuck up. You cannot do that to me, okay? That is the most excellent fucking ad break debate. Holy shit, are you fucking joking? I'm looking up the Mona Lisa mystery on YouTube. I don't give a shit, okay? I don't care. That is so good. That's so good. What the fuck? Why'd he do that? 